The Burj Khalifa, standing tall at 2,717 feet, is the tallest building on the planet. Now, if you put 50 Burj Khalifas on top of each other, you would reach a height of around 41.4 kilometers, the altitude from which Alan Eustace jumped in 2014, setting the current world record for the highest and longest freefall jump. Now, what if you were to jump from the International Space Station, the artificial satellite inhabited by humans that continuously circles our planet? Regular skydivers jump from a height of roughly 30.7 kilometers, but the highest human jump in history was executed from a much greater height, more than 40 kilometers up, by Alan Eustace. Now, think even higher. Let's talk about skydiving off the ISS. The International Space Station, or the ISS, is a large, manned, artificial satellite that orbits planet Earth at an altitude of between 330 and 435 kilometers. Jumping off the ISS would be nothing like regular skydives, because in a normal skydive, the jumper is instantly pulled down by Earth's gravity the moment he jumps from the plane. However, the gravitational pull at the altitude of the ISS orbit is much less, which is why the jumper would actually fall into orbit and begin circling the Earth, just like any other satellite. This would happen because the ISS is already in orbit, swinging around Earth at a blazing speed of 27,680 kilometers per hour. It is essentially falling towards the ground at all times, but it doesn't ever hit the ground due to its sheer orbital speed. Similarly, a skydiver from space won't fall to the ground instantly, but will instead continue orbiting the Earth. Then, there's the danger of space debris to consider. There are hundreds of thousands of little pieces of space debris orbiting our planet at this very moment. They are all of different shapes and sizes, and are often moving at speeds of up to 32,200 kilometers per hour. In fact, the ISS itself is struck by tiny particles of this debris quite frequently, but due to its exceptional structural strength, those little particles don't do any serious damage to the ISS. A skydiver, however, would need to rely entirely on the structural integrity of his spacesuit if we were struck by any of this space junk. Assuming that the skydiver remains completely unscathed by space hey. debris, he would remain in orbit and keep revolving around the Earth for a very long time. In April 2018, China's Tiangang-1 space station burned up as it fell towards the ground after two years of gradually spiraling ever closer to Earth. Since the ISS is much higher, it's reasonable to assume that a skydiver would remain in orbit for more than two years before beginning to fall more rapidly towards the ground. How exactly a man would manage to remain in orbit around the planet for more than two years all by himself is, as you can imagine, an impossibly difficult question to answer. However, assuming that he manages to do that, after a period of more than two years, the jumper would eventually start falling towards the ground due to the resistance that the minuscule amount of air offers at that altitude. The ISS is in the same orbit as the jumper, yet it doesn't fall to the ground because the ISS has its own engines that regularly compensate for its gradual loss of altitude, thus ensuring that it stays in orbit for as long as it wants. The jumper suit wouldn't have any boosters to correct his trajectory, so there's nothing stopping him from falling towards the ground eventually. Once the skydiver starts his re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, his suit's structural integrity would finally be put to the test. Spacecraft returning to Earth face intense temperatures of about 1,650 degrees Celsius due to the intense air drag moving through Earth's atmosphere. A skydiver would face similar temperature conditions during re-entry, which would make his suit incredibly hot and set it on fire. If the jumper survives that, then the most difficult part is over. Now, all the skydiver would need is some sort of mechanism in a suit to significantly slow his rapid freefall, enabling the deployment of a parachute at a safe height above the ground. He would finally be able to land on the ground safely after an extremely long, tiring, and humanly impossible freefall. All in all, a space jump off the ISS is practically impossible. Unless you're Iron Man, of course, in which case you could simply don your super armor and jump off the ISS to land on the ground in style amid a thunderous round of applause by the whole world.